John went on Monique's show Radio Gunk for an interview with her and surely I get dragged through the mud. You get dragged through the mud. Some somebody sent me a message and they go, All he talks about is you and Kevin. And I'm going, yeah. Who the fuck is Kevin? <laughs> I'm like, so, all right, let's talk about this. They start off, John's talking about he had a date the night before. He's out in Florida. He had a date the night before with a 60 year old woman. I don't know what happened to that uh, Viet- Vietnamese girlfriend he had. Remember that? Yeah. That was short lived. He was all proud of himself. But... <laughs> was that the other science than, teacher? Uh, yeah, uh, maybe. Yeah. <clears throat> other than a 90 year old, who's bragging about a hot date with a 60 year old? You <laughs> right. know what I mean? That, well, then <laughs> she's taking him to the Paul McCartney show the next night. Oh, yeah. So he's all proud of that, too. Which, whatever. <laughs> the whole thing. All right. So um, let's talk about. The fact that someone like me would have such an obsession with the stuttering <laughs> job. And I, I will say, Munich, have you ever seen such a scary obsession with one person in your life? I don't really understand the obsession with you. I, well, <laughs> some parts of me do. Okay, I, I mean, I, I know I'm you. good looking. I know that. I mean, I got to tell you, there's a curious. Um, Could it be jilted lovers? No, I think it's more the. They're waiting to see you crash and fucking burn. I mean, the, yeah. there's this genuine. You're like, you're like the car swerving on the wrong side of the traffic, and everybody's stopping to wait and see when you fucking do a head-on collision with yeah. a tractor. That's but basically. You know All right, I want to point out. Have you ever seen someone obsessed with someone like this? Monique's entire career is based on the Howard Stern show, and Howard Stern specifically, she does a show. Every week about Howard Stern. Yeah. She's like, yeah, I don't they, get it either, John. I don't right. know. These people are obsessed. That's why you're there. <laughs> yeah, the they are human GPS for everything Howard's life is attached to. Like, they know where his daughters live. They yeah. know what they do. They know, you know, it's it's psychotic. And to sit here and she's like, they want to see you crash and burn. You're one of them. Yes. What are you talking about? They. You yes. are. You well, have got a him front on. row seat for this. Yeah, you have him on because you know he's going to crash and burn. Like, get the fuck out of here. So then John goes on to talk about how they don't boo nobodies. Yeah. Fucking loves that that line for whatever reason. He just can't. St- <laughs> well, he can't stop saying no, the same wait, shit wait, over wait. and over again. Sorry, uh, that's not true at all because uh, Vic got booed quite heavily <laughs> at the live shows. <laughs> so absolutely, nobodies do get booed. <laughs> He brings up a very good point. <laughs> there, there were two shows that we did in Nashville on Saturday, and I believe she got booed at both of them. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> they, they don't moo nobodies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so John wants to get in about me right away. He interrupts yeah. Monique to talk about me right away. You know, I, I don't have one. a problem with all of that, but well, I'll tell you what I do have a problem with, if I could just, because I don't really give a fuck. I'm going to say whatever I want. <laughs> Is this guy, and, I, and you know, I always give you whatever, I, you know. Uh, uh, Kevin from uh, uh, Why Do We Podcast, you know, this show that, you know. And I I've never watched their show. Okay. But they- First off, because we're going to talk about this a lot, so I might as well just address it right now. His friend, his friend Tony Michaels. Decided to call me Kevin from Why Do We Podcast. And John has latched on this like it's his joke. Yeah. He's so well, that's proud of this. That's because he doesn't write jokes. He's right. never so written this, a joke. This yeah. is now his joke because yes. he's taking it. And and like every joke he takes from some place or something, he milks it dry and yeah. buries it into the ground. Yeah, he, he ruins it. He says it over and over and over again as if like I'm going to be offended because he calls me Kevin. Oh, man, John's really burning shot. me good. <laughs> wow. What a shot. Yeah. And I've never watched their show. Okay, but they podcasts. do a show that is dedicated to me. You know, what? 45 minutes every single show. That's fine. I don't really care. Hate on me all you want. I really don't care. Yeah, he doesn't. The thing I do I care, care about is he posts the audio book of my book, which I own the copyright from. Yeah. He posts things on my beer in the balcony, which is behind my paywall. Yeah. You know, that's, you know, that's my content. And he posts that as if it's his own. And charges money. 
bullshit do I post that as if it's my own? I would never, ever do that, John. I wouldn't be where I am today if I was posting your material as if it were my own. Hey, check out this book I wrote about me being on Howard Stern's show. For, Isn't that Cedric all, John's book? No, no, no. It's mine. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> I just go in and change the name. <laughs> If I could just circle back to the beginning of this rant where he cuts off Monique and he goes, look, I'm just going to say whatever I want to say as if he's under oath uh, (laughs) at some Senate hearing and he's going off book. Um, And and then, you know, his whole the whole rap of like this doesn't bother me. None of this bothers me. I'm bigger than this. And then it's all he can talk about. It is phenomenal yeah he he goes back and forth throughout this entire this is almost an hour and a half he goes back and forth between i don't care and carl has got some problems ahead for him and here's what you should care about john the fact that you are providing enough content to do 45 minutes a week on you (laughs) yeah Yeah. and by the way shuli we're gonna start doing two shows a week starting in june because I can't get to all this shit. He did an, uh, another hour with Tony Michaels and Gabe from his show yesterday. I, I can't even get to that. There's too much to talk about already. So it's like it's, it's like going to a garbage <laughs> dump. You ever been to a garbage dump? Yes. There's garbage everywhere. You know why? Because there's t- there's so much. They can't get it all. They can't. John's show is like a garbage dump. It stinks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So this is he goes right into how much money we make on Patreon. And this is what's really grinding his gears. He's been talking about this nonstop. Someone must have sent him a link or something. He's like, what the fuck? This guy's making a living off of this. He's really upset about it. And he makes between seven and ten thousand dollars a month. Wow. And almost every single show is where he breaches my copyright and posts something. That is an issue. I already got him to take down. Four or five. For now. How many are there? Uh, Well, now, look, About a he million. also posts with this show that I'm doing tomorrow, the <laughs> MSCS podcast. So he posts all those. Hmm. That guy's not so happy about it. So Kevin is treading in in waters that I wouldn't tread in. <laughs> well, you've, you've never treaded water. in water. I'll oh, never tread. They're going to calling me. Hold on. I'm going to turn my phone off. <laughs> Fucking phone. What the fuck is he saying? How do you so, not learn to turn your fucking phone off, John? I'll never Jesus Christ. Like, five years ago, people were calling you during the shows. Put the fucking phone on vibrate and leave it there for the rest of your fucking life. <laughs> fuck. Yeah. This yeah. is the guy. This is the guy that movie theaters are like, be sure to turn your phone no. off. Like, yeah, I put my phone on silent in 2013. <laughs> Thanks for the fucking information. <laughs> but then there's John. They're like, oh, uh, um, I, there's a button. I know. Uh, uh, uh. As the movie's starting, he's still got the thing on full fucking brightness down there in the front row. Like, what are you doing, retard? Why do you even have a phone? Put uh, it in another room, you dipshit. By the way, Joe Jesus got a Discord Christ. in our Discord. Says that that was him calling. <laughs> because he leaves it on every single show. <laughs> Shout out to you, Joe got a Discord. Well, you got to keep that ringer on just in case you, you get that call for the roast of AC Green that they want you to write <laughs> and host. In case one of your Tinder matches texts you and yeah. it turns out not to be a robot. So this is interesting, Shuey, because he's just said Tommy from MSCS is not happy with me. Now, since both of the interviews or all three of the interviews that John's done with Tommy, I have been mm-hmm. in communication with him. We've texted together. We've emailed together. Me too. He's not me expressed too. that he's upset with me in any way. So I'm, I'm curious if this is true or not. He seems to be threatening me. He's telling it's a me trade that- gen horse. We're sending him in. It's gonna, that's how we're going to get you. Ugh. Michael Popark. Sure, you've talked strategy. to Tommy, right? I have very nice gentleman. I, I have cool. nothing nothing bad to say about the guy, and we're uh, still working out uh, the details of of him coming on my show, and I I go on his show, and yeah, but uh, open lines of communication, as yeah. far as I know. This is really weird that John's going. Oh, and you know Tommy's mad too. I wouldn't fuck with that guy. Like, wait a second, what's what's going on right here? I got friends in Narnia. They're connected. <laughs> That's all I'll say. All right. So this is now Monique finally went on Dabbler's Anonymous for the first time. Yeah. And there's some interesting information going on here. I did for the first time go on to your, not your, but your um, incredibly <laughs> um, boisterous and fruitful 
a Reddit site dedicated to you. Yeah, but I'm not. I don't go on there. I don't even no, know. What I'm just is. telling you. So yeah. okay. So I, I don't know there's Reddit. the website as you uh, the 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 uh, subreddit. What's a website. Obviously, as you know, Dabblers Anonymous, <laughs> and one of them started ripping me a new asshole, and and I'm swearing it was Shuli, but I'll just go with okay. Yes, well, you get a lot of hate too, as I recall. So Monique thinks that you were ripping her an asshole on Dabblers Anonymous, Shuli. Care to respond? I, I wish these people between her and John thinking I'm every other person on Twitter. <laughs> Mothering like, Jay! We're talking about her. I mean, Julie on the show. I, I swear, I wish I had the time and the energy and the and the effort in giving a shit to to waste my days and lives chasing after these idiots online. You know, I I get a call from somebody from Stern Show Past uh, last week. Yeah, it says Stuttering John just called me asking me for your phone number. The guy who has me blocked on Twitter is calling my friends asking for my phone number, and I'm like, and he goes, "What the fuck is wrong with this moron?" I said, "I, I have no idea. If he unblocks me, I'll give him my cell phone number right now." And meanwhile, uh, without even talking about it. I've had three different people send me his number. Oh, I have I, his number. I have his number too. I know. Everyone sends me John's number. I'm like, I don't. I don't need John's number. I have no reason I'm to call this looking, guy. Yeah, I'm, I. He, this is the difference. Like he's doing an interview that he could be promoting whatever he's working on his show, yeah. talking about upcoming guests. No, he's sitting there talking about how successful Kevin is on his Patreon, <laughs> yeah. and and how and and I'm just fucking in his head with a campfire on roasted marshmallows in this fucking guy's brain. It's great. Also, Shuli, I don't know if you picked up on this, but John who doesn't read the hate sites somehow recalls that Shuli used to get a lot of hate. Somehow he just oh, remembers yeah. that you used well, to get a lot of hate on these sites too. Well, and she goes, "I was on this Dabblers Anonymous." He goes, "We well, I'm not on there. I, I don't know anything about it." I don't know anything about it. What? Well, so one thing, I, I, do you think it's a projection for them to make it easier to think that there's only like five or six of you people that hate one another? That, yeah, that comes up in they, the show, yeah. If they had to believe that, I don't know how many people are on Dabblers Anonymous, like 1,000 or 5,000 subscribers, if you had to believe that that's 5,000 unique individuals that just hate you and want to make fun of you, I think that'd be a lot more crushing than thinking that Shuli has 3,500 fake accounts yeah, and yeah. Carl has right. 2,400 <laughs> yeah. fake accounts and producer Chris has 100 fake accounts. Uh, hey, well, come you... on. Pick up the slack <laughs> here, sorry, producer sorry, Chris. Sorry, guys. Yeah, come on, Chris. <laughs> that's, on a, that's the other thing. Is, is somebody was sending me tweets saying, uh, John says you you have fo you bought followers. And oh, I'm like, dude. I got, I'll get into that. I have a clip oh, okay, on that. Okay, then I'll, wait. I'll yeah, wait. wait. Wait for that because... That that's an interesting part of this because they get into yeah. you quite a bit. But all right, well, let's talk about how much John doesn't care. All right, I don't care. I think I, that's no, important to talk don't about because I, you know, trolls would do stupid shit with my face, and even yeah. today they still do, and I don't care. I, I just don't. Yeah. There's nothing I can do about it. So ignorance that's, is bliss. That's that's when you really become way more powerful is when you don't care, <laughs> and, and that's like I don't go on. I don't care. <laughs> Jen, you can't say you can't say I'm going to sue Kevin from Why Do I Podcast and I don't care on the same show. It doesn't make any sense. This is like Oprah's show, Super Dope Sunday. These two dopes <laughs> sitting here talking about, but they don't fucking care. Meanwhile, their whole lives surrounding it, and and uh, it's all they do is care. And the the whole conversation was about how Monique you didn't use to show her face, and she didn't want to put herself out there because people would goof on her. And I yeah. I believe. By the way, I want to say this about Monique. I think she did a, a fantastic job on the show. She did a great job interviewing John. She asked all the questions that I would have asked because she got the questions right from the dabblers. So that was great. And, you know, she was a neutral party in this. I thought, I thought she did a pretty good job. Um, and the, the fact that she's like, I don't care. I believe her. I think she really has gotten to that point where she's like, people are going to goof on me, whatever. I'm comfortable with what I'm doing. John is not even close to that place. He's the furthest from being in that place you could possibly be. He's threatening to sue people on the Internet. Uh, well, I do you... think he's getting more powerful because I think he's been eating a lot more baloney. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's two ways to get power, not caring and baloney. <laughs> when you don't care about what they say, that is when you hold the power. That is why I am powerless. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's specifically it. So what Monique says, and by the way, I want to point out that on the Shuli show, you did an entire episode about Suttery John recently that I was rolling. I thought you did a phenomenal job on there. 
people, yeah, people it was should a, check that it out. It was a good time. It, it was, it's like, and it's all a blur. I, I get, I get it all off my chest in one shot, and then I don't even remember what I said. And you started texting me stuff that I said, and yeah. it made me laugh all over again. No, well, one of the things that you said was John should embrace the trolls. Like, why wouldn't yeah. you lean into this? This is like what your online persona is now. And Monique actually says the same thing. It's like Shocking. if I had a whole site dedicated to me with thousands of people that like to spew hate on me, yeah. I one thousand percent would at that point embrace it. I really think that you should, you I, know, I've do the dabblers tour. The the well, fucking I have no tour. desire. I have too much. I don't have that much time to go and focus on people trashing me. That's ridiculous. You used to, though. You used to get really mad. You even called me after the last fucking show and asked me what my hat said. And I was like, dude, it's Depeche because Mode. Because everybody was saying that you were trolling Who's me. Who's everybody? It's I a didn't fucking listen. Depeche Mode hat. Do you think I would spend the time or you money? You just got done saying there are thousands of people. There are. There are. There's okay. like 2,700 <laughs> yeah. people on that yeah. site. <laughs> there are. And they, so, um... Well, a portion of them were all saying to me that, that you had a hat. And I was like... Oh, you called me immediately. You said, what hat did you have on? I'm like, and I'm thinking, I don't even know. So the last time John was on with Monique, she was wearing a Depeche Mode hat. People told John that it was a dab was out of his hat. So he got all pissed off at Monique over it. So he's trying to say he doesn't listen to the haters. And at the same time, he's like, well, people were telling me this thing. You believe wasn't everything this, that people tell you, John. Yeah. Wasn't this guy somewhat in the music industry? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I believe he had a record deal he talks about quite a bit. Oh my God! What a fucking moron! John, He's not Mon smart. Monique was going after your kids too. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, this. And by is, the way, she's yeah. full of shit too. She wouldn't lean into that fucking shit. Let me no. tell you something. She hates me just because I called her out for being phony. That's the only thing. I I have no problem with their site. They can do show after show on me. I don't give yeah. a fuck. But but when she messaged me asking me to come on her show for one of these interviews, I'm like, you've said horrible shit about me, about my family. Like, why would I come on the show? And she's like, oh, I don't really hate you. That's that kind of hate saved for family. I'm like, what kind of fucking fucked up family do you grow up in? <laughs> fucking psycho. Yeah. So, yeah, that that I don't buy that either. Listen, I don't care who you are. People fucking with you will affect you until it doesn't. Or until you quit and give up. That's it. Well, she says that thing about you don't have the, have the time to, to do this kind of stuff. What else does he have going on? Nothing. I'm sure he sleeps <laughs> until 10 a.m. to sleep off the hangover. Yeah. He gets up, eats a couple bologna sandwiches. By 3 o'clock, he's at one of the pubs. Yeah. And then he gets told to leave there at 2 in the morning when the place shuts down. Like, he's got nothing but time to be on his fucking phone there at the pub just hearing about how, oh, she's saying Monique was wearing a Dabbers Anonymous hat while I was on. She, oh, she's trashing me. Oh, she's hey, talking about my kids. You know, I, you can say anything about me, but don't talk about my kids. You know, and so he has nothing but time to to dwell on this shit because he has literally nothing else going on in his life. Hold on a second. I have to say, Tab, being a substitute teacher is an important job <laughs> because sometimes <laughs> teachers get the sniffles and someone's got to watch those kids for six hours. And John right, is guys, able to do that. Open your books while I scroll through titty Instagram pictures. <laughs> Go ahead. Jeez. The your memes teacher that were made. The worksheet. And yeah. uh, you're going to do that. And I'm going to sit at this desk. All right, we're going to get into all of this. I just got to run through these rapid fire because I pulled too many clips as usual. It's just too fun. So John explains that these people, these trolls, are actually terrorists. That's what they do. <laughs> they are, in the world of terrorism, these are anonymous, cowardless, I mean, <laughs> cowards, <laughs> anonymous cowards who are... Who, who, who really have no life? Okay, That's here's what Jerry says. I'm going to put it up on the screen here. The trolls have deep pockets. We would double John's income if he didn't yeah, okay. block us. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. So look, I just wanna... look, can I just can I just again remind everyone? This guy's got all the time in the world, nothing but time, and yeah. this is the camera angle he decided <laughs> to do. I know. <laughs> to do this fucking yeah. dumb interview. I'll put the light Terrorists. on my bald spot. And this will be fine. Yeah, they're oh, committing right. jihad on my content wall. They declared a fatwa. Uh, a fatwa. 
The best is that Jerry Winters, who podcast Hitman murdered <laughs> over a year ago, <laughs> is the person putting in $10. And it's a, a photo of podcast Hitman. <laughs> <laughs> these trolls are like it's like these dab it's like inception. There's yeah. layers to know, the yeah. trolling. It's you don't so even great. Realize it. Yeah. So then Monique comes up with an idea that maybe John should, as he, she was saying, lean into this, like even make t shirts for the Dabblers yeah. Anonymous. I really, really believe that it would be so fucking funny for you to have like t shirts that said like the dabbler. Or like the the dabbler tour. I just think it's a funny word, and I can't even imagine well, how something like that would be misconstrued and all of a sudden become something that's like let so me ask ridiculously you a question, hateful. Mm. Let's uh, say there's twenty. Let's say there's even twenty seven hundred. I don't believe so. I believe a lot of them have ten different names, which I have, all uh, I deal with on every show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's say there's twenty seven hundred. All right. So John doesn't believe there's 2,700 unique people. All of us make all these different accounts and everything. What I think is funny there is that Monique obviously saw the video where Dr. Steve revealed his Dabbler's shirt. Like that, that was yes. Dr. Steve's idea. He already did that. Yeah, Those shirts exist. <laughs> and now I remember one of my whole points was like, you should set up cameras like they have in those watering holes in Africa where people yes. at their office will just sit at their desk and they'll be like, look at that. It's a fucking zebra drinking out of the water. And that's John. We would all watch John get up, scratch his ass, and make coffee or what? Like, people would pay top dollar for that. It's dumb. It's yeah, dumb like, on his part. Like the Truman Show. Right. You want to make money? Start your cameo. Say, I'll read anything you send me. And then back up the fucking. Oh, he does. Yeah, he's, he's more than <laughs> halfway oh, yeah, there. <laughs> yeah. that, that's already happening. But you're right. If he just put cameras in his house and put a GoPro on his head and just walked around, uh, people would totally watch that and donate to him. He'd probably be one of the biggest Twitch streamers to Dude, ever exist. You know how many videos I've watched of an eagle with a fucking camera strapped to it? <laughs> yeah, like, right. I'm stoned. I'm there for 48 minutes. I don't give a shit. John with a helmet on walking around the city, <laughs> sitting at a bar for four hours. I mean, God, that would be amazing. So John goes on to say that these 2,700 trolls, he doesn't believe it's that many, but let's say it is. That represents 0.009% of the people who know who he is. Because John's big thing is how famous he is. He <laughs> cannot <laughs> let go of how famous he is. He's so proud of himself. Uh. He's for, insulted by the suggestion. That's how famous yeah. he thinks he is. <laughs> it really is incredible. Uh, right, this, uh, so he thinks he thinks the number is smaller than twenty seven hundred. Right. I think it's bigger because yeah. I think there are people like me. This that I'm not on Reddit, so I neither you know, am I. Yeah. Tw- yeah. Well, okay. Okay, Shuli. Uh, we 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 are we already know. Uh, <laughs> you know, so I I think that number is bigger. But even then, he's oh I'm point oh nine percent of the of those my fame. I had no fucking idea who Stuttering John was until I started listening to this show. Right. And you're right that it is more people than that because you have to subscribe to it. A lot of people go on there and read it and don't subscribe to it. I know that our subreddit has 4,000 subscribers and we get 11 to 12,000 unique visitors every month. So it's not Uh, just people who are subscribing. How much is 4,000 subscribers come out to, Kevin? What what are you making there (laughs) on my name? (laughs) All right, so this is just a fun one-off question that Monique has for John. He tries to have fun with it, but I'm already six to eight beers in, so I'm like, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm how many drink in a night? <laughs> what? Of how many is. beers can you drink in a decent night? On a normal night, 40. I don't know, twenty-seven. <laughs> normal? I'm just kidding, Monique. No, seriously. I'll, yeah, probably like ten. Hmm. Oh, please. Okay. So Please, what I think it's funny know. is that he goes 27. Like, that was the joke. Oh, I'll drink 27 beers. Now, Monique didn't laugh. She's yeah. like, oh, geez. She, <laughs> she really didn't bat an eye. Right. And then, and then he goes, I'm just kidding. More like a dozen. Like, well, what? First of all, <laughs> What's the let me tell you this. He wasn't lying. That number 27 yeah. is so random that that is, that is, he's such an alcoholic. He remembers it as if it's a, he set a fucking land speed record, right? Oh, he he like, bought a 30 pack and there were three the next morning. He's like, what the fuck happened to my 30 pack? Exactly. So t- 27 <laughs> is his, is his high score. And he remembers <laughs> that. And that's yeah. the first number that comes to his head. And then he sees the look of concern and shock. <laughs> yeah. And Monique's pun him over there, and then he goes uh, ten, like like he's gonna be normal. Normal people don't drink ten beers <laughs> yeah, I by know. themselves. I know. He's like, I'm just kidding. I'm not crazy. Just ten. <laughs> okay. I, no, I, 
I don't think 27 is a high score. I think 27 is the number because uh, we've seen him on shows drink six or eight beers in a, the period of an hour. Or yeah, two. he chugs. And then, and even in that conversation, he'll say, "Oh, I've had I've had so many beers prior to this." And so, you know, we regularly see him drinking 16 to 18 beers. I'm thinking on any given Thursday, he's sitting at Pickwick Pub, you know, putting down two or three beers an hour from 4 p.m. until one in the morning, and you know, that's 27 beers. And like you said, he, the the case only has three left in it. He knows that because there's, I'm sure there's a, a math that he does where every so many cases, he every nine cases, he gets a free one, you know, a free night. I already paid for these. So, there's, you know, every nine <laughs> yeah, days I get a right. free day. Uh, Has you know, anyone he, reached out to Pickwick yet to see if we can set up a live <laughs> show there yet? I we, mean, we got to do that. I think that'd be kind of fun if we did do that at some point. Uh, anyway, producer Chris, I just I think this guy drinks too much, <clears throat> right? Yeah, he's the problem. All right, so let me talk about <laughs> Chrissy Mayer. <laughs> How many yeah. beers can you drink in a normal day, Carl? Uh, I I have my number twenty seven. <laughs> yeah, what's your high score? <laughs> what's my high score? Do seltzers count as beer? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now they start talking about the origin of the Dabbler and how Chrissy Mayer had the show. <laughs> And, you know, said, oh, I didn't realize you dabble in comedy. And so John starts to decide to go after Chrissy Mayer here. Then she goes, so you dabble in comedy. And I went, <laughs> now she damn well knows that I'm doing stand up all. Right. She didn't know. So then I She's go, a comedian. <laughs> well, if you ever saw her act, you would pro- you'd probably say differently. But Is that then what she I does said, for a living? Is that what she does? Yeah, like, actually? No, who knows what she makes a living okay. at? I mean, I, I know she had an OnlyFans. I've saw all those freaking pictures, and I'm telling you, Monique, you don't, you don't have to worry about how you look. I mean, <laughs> I seeing, her, it, seeing her in a bikini on the edge of a boat posing as if she's freaking Christy Brinkley, you know, and, and she looks more like Christy Cream. I mean, it's just like, it, it's just, you know. That's always a joke. That's kind of a good one. Yeah, I mean, I'd give him that one. That's but it. did he say crispy or did he say crispy? He said crispy cream, which doesn't make sense because her name is yeah. Chrissy. Yeah. And Christy uh, I'll, I'll punch that up in, in post. And I'll do <laughs> something with that. Jeez, I wonder why everyone hates stuttering John Melendez. He calls this, <laughs> this woman ugly, says that she doesn't make a living off of comedy, doesn't know First anything all, that's going does. on. Yeah, of course she, she does. She 100% does. Yeah. And she does a, a show and yep. she makes a living off of that. And she has a Patreon and she has an OnlyFans and she makes money off all those things. She's touring all over the country. Yeah. Um, and in my opinion, her saying you dabble in comedy was one of the nicest compliments you should ever get in comedy. Yeah, ever. She was giving him an out. Right. She she literally said, and she said this multiple times, she goes, I tour all around. I've never seen his name on a marquee anywhere. And, and typically when you're a touring comedian, you know who's out on the road because you see their posters up because they're coming up next month or they were here a month ago or whatever it is. John doesn't do that. He's not a stand up. And that's what she was saying. Everything about John screams he doesn't care. Yes. You understand from from the camera angle. I don't. From I, the don't look, I, no, I, I don't care. I know. I don't care. He really doesn't. He really doesn't about himself more than anything else. <laughs> so he goes on to talk about how he's just making up lies about this video that's out there. Anyone can watch it. This interview he did with Chrissy. He's like, well, you know, she was saying that COVID kills as many people as the common cold does. And she's just such an asshole. She was just trying to trigger me. It's like, none of that's true. We can all go back. and watch. He says that she edited the video. Not true. The whole video is out there. Well, he, he's the victim, Carl. I, I he's know. always the victim. You know that. But it's it's so ridiculous because it's so easily provable yeah, yeah, that yeah. he's lying and that he's wrong and that he's an idiot. So John does. Uh, this is just a clip that I just wanted to keep just so we could have it on the board. They want to like you know call me the dabbler or whatever they want to call me. If that if that if that rocks their boat, if they can jerk off to you know calling me the dabbler. God bless them, Monique. You know, like do you really think I can't? Like it's like look, <laughs> listen. I jerk off to Asian lesbians. Yeah. The dad where I just think it's funny. <laughs> and it's rocks your world and floats your boat. Right. I know you always get these things confused. We're gonna chew the shit about the dad. <laughs> chew the shit. Uh, he's, been, he's been screaming like Lenny Bruce during his trial and he's going, Do you think I care, Monique? Really? <laughs> yeah. Do you think any of this bothers me? It's been three hours and forty five minutes that I've been talking about it, but I you know, I I, I don't I don't care. 
uh, uh, you know, the, you know, I, I don't really care about the trolls. So at but this point I in the show, hate them. Uh, Monique starts asking him the questions that we need answered, and this is how John handles that. You motherfucker! I cannot believe you're not answering my questions. All right, number three: Are you or are you not a substitute teacher? Yes or fucking no? <laughs> that won't do either. What the fuck does that mean? It means I'm not addressing. That won't do. I'm not addressing these things. Does that mean I play, yes? I played the that fifth. Mean that, does that I mean shall yes? Not because you're not or addressing deny anything that you're asking me right now. <laughs> I, I shall not confirm or deny any of the questioning, any of the line of questioning that you're going down. I don't. I don't have an obligation to answer to what these people on Dabblers, you know, on Reddit, conjure up. Uh, I think you just answered the question. And also conjured Uh, up. There's photographic evidence. (laughs) There's students who are tweeting about you being in their classroom. What do you mean we conjured it up? Like you're obviously a substitute teacher. It's fine. Who cares? I can neither confirm nor deny uh, my uh, moonlighting as as a teacher of substitutions. Uh, I have a poster of the element charts in my house. It's a coincidence. <laughs> I tell you. I mean, Jesus Christ, man! Talk about guilty without saying guilty. It, it's and then and then he's like, he's such a dick. He's like, you come on this show, you're doing this interview. And if I'm Monique, I go, well, get the fuck out of here then. Go fuck yourself, you know? This but is not he's a hard like, question. Are you a substitute teacher that, or not? Like, just yes or no. Yeah. This question and, this question is coming from the host of the show. So have some respect for the show that you're on yeah. and answer it. Yeah. Why not? And what again, does it matter? What does again, it matter? lean into it. Lean right. into it. It takes the power out of their hands. Right. Instead, he pretty much confirms that he is a substitute teacher, which yeah. is the dumbest thing he could have done. Like, why would you just be like, yeah, I've, I've done some substitute teaching. You uh, you cut the you cut the ending of this where he told her to stay after the class. He wanted to talk to her. <laughs> yeah, pissed. back to the angle of his video. It's like uh, you're being punished. And you will be going to the principal's office. I mean, uh, sleep with the fishes. <laughs> That's a, I, What does it matter if the answer is yes? If the answer is yes, right. yeah, I, I do some substitute teaching uh, as something to do. It's a great way to meet women. Or I like yeah. you know, being around kids and jerking off in the room. Like Whatever the, <laughs> whatever the answer is, to, th- there's no way it's worse than like what we already think of you, John. Yeah. No, no one's, no one's going to be like, oh, he's a substitute teacher. What a loser! As yeah. if the last like ten years of his life has not already established <laughs> that he's the biggest loser in America. <laughs> I substitute teach from five hundred feet away. It's a long story. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, that's what he... I like about the high school girls. You know, they uh, they are still high schoolers, and I am an old man. <laughs> Dude, does he <laughs> does he think he's pulling the wool over our eyes? Like his beer on the balcony is so popular. That he's making a living from that. No one thinks that. He all but admits it in this interview that he doesn't make much money from that. So it's like it's fine. You need a side gig. He, the, he admits it in this angle. He admits it in this <laughs> yeah, angle. Yeah, you, that's you, true you, too. This is not a rich man here. <laughs> all right. So now there's a question about him with the Pickwick Pub because we haven't been hearing about the Pickwick Pub that much lately. Uh oh. Um, people want to know why were you banned from the Pickwick Pub? I don't even know what that question means, but I'll throw it out there. God, Monique, you're really going to the bottom of the barrel here. I don't even know uh, what it means. That would really be detrimental to Pickwick Pub, considering I probably pay for their kids' college tuition, uh, <laughs> considering the, <laughs> the amount of money I spend there. Every Where day. is the-, <laughs> <laughs> the amount of money I spend there every day? <laughs> Betty Loco, are you listening to this? When you're donating to John, that money's going directly to the Pickwick Pub. 27 beers college. a day, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> he was so offended by that question. You think that they would kick me out of that place? I'm their best customer, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. And what? And I've never heard a guy who loves to drink saying he put a bartender's kids through college yeah. before. That was such an original line. Yeah, that was, good that one. Was crazy. He's really smug yeah. about that one. Yeah, <laughs> I know. By the way, that's when you know he's telling the truth. Yeah, because right. listen how smug he's just like. Psh- you think they would kick me out of that place? I'm fucking right. customer and, of the month. <laughs> do you know that's who also, I am? Do that's you know also the closest to, he comes to being funny is yes. when he when he's like this. Indignant about it. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I fucking drink there every day. What do you mean I'm not allowed there? <laughs> 
All right. So they get they, new kegs in, and they, they 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 write my name on the side. <laughs> yeah, you know, course light for John. John. Do we know that he got banned over there, though? No, and actually, Gary from San Diego left us a voicemail that I'm going to play later in the show that explains all the places that John hangs out, and I guess they're all owned by the same guy. Okay. There's like three oh. places all near his house. They're all a British pub. I'm already later. thinking what he could have been banned for. Yeah. Like the like in my head, the scenarios of of and you know. So all right, I'll wait till it really happens. Okay. The, the, the claim that I was banned uh, uh, for stink lines is not true. <laughs> <laughs> I replaced the ceiling tiles, yeah. and we're fine now. <laughs> you know, do you know how many people I've tapped on the shoulder with my penis that think it's hilarious? <laughs> The list is endless. Well, the only stories he tells about the pub is getting into political debates with people who are more conservative than him. So I can't imagine he's fun to uh, be around at this place. No one wants to get into a fucking political argument with this retard who's been watching MSNBC for an hour and a half that morning. Like, oh, God, John, go away. Isn't this why you go to a bar? Because you're sick of hearing that. politics at home yeah. or whatever bullshit at yeah, can home. Can we just watch the baseball game, please? That's <laughs> just watch it. the Dodgers in peace. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. All right. So then we get into the DC debacle. And <laughs> I love Monique's question because she goes, You had a year to prepare, John. How did you fuck <laughs> this up? <laughs> How do you do? How do you do this with a year to prepare? Like okay. seriously? Okay. okay, Monique. Okay, so again, I know you're trying. My to... dogs. My dogs are barking like fucking yeah. loons, which okay. is why I keep putting but you on. I find on, it okay. more annoying okay. about your question because, like I said, <laughs> it was on the calendar they were incessant. You made me what laugh. happened was later on. Okay, I find out from because then there was a congressman there, and he was Democrat, so I was going to bother him and. Actually, I'm, not, I'm supposed to book him on my show. Anyway, his assistant, I go, what happened? Congress is not in session? She goes, no. Well, on the schedule, I have it on my phone. It says they're in session. And she goes, yeah, they canceled it last They canceled it last minute. I have her on tape saying this. That's amazing. Yes. <clears throat> so it's not, my, it's not for my lack of planning. It's for just total freaking bad luck. Ew. This mm. is, hey, did you see that spit? The spit, it was like a fucking, it was like water gushing, running down a fucking side of a mountain. We we oh. live in western New York near Niagara Falls. I don't need to visit there anytime soon. <laughs> We're going to see the real thing. It'd so, be great if the phone, if you just see a wiper come across this. <laughs> <laughs> I got this put on. <laughs> Special. Uh, so his, his story has changed. Yeah. Because in the original, the one he told right after he got back, or I think it maybe he was still in his mom's house, he <laughs> said that a teacher teaching a school group said the flags are down because Congress isn't in session. But now it's a congressional staffer that told him. Well, You're he right. did. Th- actually, both of those things are true. He heard oh, okay. it from this this teacher, and he's like, "No, that can't be true." And he checked his phone, and then he asks someone. And they're like, "No, no, it's true. We're not. They're not in session." And what I love about this is that this is why John is. So funny and so fun. He never learns from his mistakes. He never will. He'll never admit defeat. He just says, this was not my fault. I didn't do anything wrong. This is just bad luck. How about this, John? How about, I don't know, plan out a week in case it's raining that day or any number of things that could go wrong. He's like, I was there in a three-hour window and there were no other congressmen there. Not my fault. Yes, that is your fault, you idiot. I said, Congress, week? these three days are good for me. Show up. <laughs> yeah. And you want none him of to them spend, came. You want him to spend a whole week there? Do you know what it costs? Do you know how many trips to Nashville it would cost for him to be in D.C. for a whole week? It was a $400 a night for the hotel. I know. You know the train costs all that money. He had to pay the videographer. You, you want him to spend a fortune, a fortune to do his fucking job. Oh, Ridiculous. Oh, no. I know. He he. That doesn't even enter into the realm of possibilities for him when he's thinking about this he's like monique what else could possibly i've done i mean there's there's no other way i could have pulled this off and she even says she's like well you didn't even buy a suit i mean there's so many things you could have done (laughs) and he's like he's like well i had to go to florida and then to new york and then to dc what am i gonna pack a suit like well yeah yeah (laughs) i do this all the time i don't think your question was just about congress in right not it's about how could you (laughs) fuck this up in yeah. so many ways. You didn't get the audio right. You yeah. didn't get the well, video right. You, you didn't know who you were talking to. Like there's so many things. If you read between the lines, he's not he's not wrong. 
<laughs> it has nothing to do with his planning because yeah. he planned nothing. So right. good point. <laughs> yeah, he, he hopped on a train. It well, dropped him off. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm gonna go roam the earth. I'll see you later. <laughs> Like the Incredible Hulk in the 70s TV series of Bill Bixby. I'm going to go find Republicans and set right what once went wrong. Uh. All right. So this is kind of fun because Monique asks John if he considers himself a comedian or a writer. I always like to say both. <laughs> it's it's a a trap. Trap. What do you think, Julie? Oh, a hundred percent both. And, uh, and uh-huh. not only does he say both, he's insulted that she even had to. <laughs> you fucking one hundred percent nailed it, Chili. Why? Yeah, because this is every open <laughs> micer. So you understand? I've met a million fucking losers like this guy. Um. Okay. First and foremost, do you consider yourself a comedian or a writer, or what do you consider yourself? Well, I consider myself a, a comedian man. and a writer, which are a lot of comics who have Ugh. had careers at both. It would kind of make sense if you write jokes that you'd probably get on stage and tell them, right? So after, what like, a you, know, you know, I'm always curious about this. <laughs> you know? And John was writing, John Arm was writing a couple of questions. Love um, Arm. So after Leno, um, what happened with like parlaying that? success into something mm-hmm. else like in that same genre before you absolutely well, first nothing. of all jimmy fallon wouldn't hire any of us <laughs> smart <laughs> oh smart <laughs> guy dude <laughs> yeah. i, I would love, neither <clears throat> i love monique's question because she led him down this path are you a comedian or a writer on um, both oh, how come you haven't had a job since the tonight show yeah. <laughs> <laughs> since i knew you were gonna say both i'd like yeah. to follow that up with follow up is how come we don't have a job in hollywood that you moron i picture this big boardroom right and all of leno's guys are in there like eating donuts and stuff and hanging out and and on the other side of the of the two-way glass is jimmy fallon like <laughs> like a cop yeah. and he's just going around he's going okay so who's that guy and they go oh that's uh john melinda stuttering john and they go, okay, what does he do for Jay? And they go, yeah, we don't, we don't know. They just yeah. all start looking at each other. Does anybody know what John does here? And he goes, yeah, let's, let's get him out by the end of today. That'd be great. And you know, NBC was like, all right, Jimmy, you're taking over the show. You have unlimited budget. Hire whoever you want. And he's like, yeah, but not, not him. That's, that's not a good idea. Yeah. Uh, so uh, John goes uh, on to explain that he did have jobs after The Tonight Show. And he even brings up the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar roast, to which Monique is like, John, no one knows about that. That's not a thing. That's not a job. Well, that you was just on go, TV. You go, I had some work here yeah. and there. That's right. what you, you don't, because once you get into details, it's going to get embarrassing. Well, right, because he brings up Stephanie Miller. And holy shit, there was a person, I'm sorry, I'm blanking on the name, but somebody put together this amazing video that's in Dabblers Anonymous where John's talking about all the jobs he's had since The Tonight Show, because there's this other writing gig he had. I forget what the name of that was, but literally... I, I gotta see this. Literally, the so so what he does, what this person did is they put together him saying what job he had and then showing him performing that job. Oh, I gotta and see. so he's talking about this writing gig he had, and the, the bit that he came up with was he put a dollar bill on a fishing line, and people were trying to pick it up, and he's like pulling it away from it, going, ha ha! Whoa. It's the dumbest thing. I mean, it's so lame. And that's wow. like what he contributed to that. All right, guys, that's lunch. We're going to come back with pull my finger after <laughs> lunch. All right. I've been saving one in the chamber for this bit. It's going to be great. Uh, uh, I'm hey, going to need two gonna mics try, on my ass. <laughs> I'm going to try and double combo it up with you got something on your shirt. I'm going to try that. <laughs> all right. So here's a question for you, Shuli. Yeah. Who do you think had the best career post Howard Stern of the Howard Stern team staffers? Mm. What do you think John will say to that himself? Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Who do you think made the most of their afterlife when leaving Stern? I'm going to throw Me. out to you that Scott seems really fucking happy as a, like a retired guy. He looked great. Actually, I would say me, wouldn't you? Oh my God! <laughs> what immediately, a... of course, it was me. Well, Billy what West is doing twat. pretty well. You, you couldn't finish your fucking sentence. I know, John. Just immediately, put your fucking eyebrows down, you cunt. <laughs> yeah. And the other one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what a fucking asshole! What a dick. But I, again, I give credit to Monique because she knows how he's going to answer these questions. Oh, yeah. That's why yeah. she's doing it. Yeah. 
Well, and that's why it bugs me when she says stuff. These people just want to see you crash and burn. Yeah. But I'm your friend. <laughs> yeah. I like you. She's manipulating him, but she does a good job. But it's it's yeah, easy to do. Is. John's a fucking yeah. moron. So he's totally falling for it. Uh, yeah. I think I did the best career. Wouldn't you agree with me, Monique? No, because you're sitting there talking to Monique. <laughs> yeah, that that right. is right I, there, a red light that should be flashing in your mind. I substitute taught Miss Stewart's English class for six weeks. <laughs> and uh, I don't want to brag. What's see Jackie the Joke Bad do that? Best one, the best substitute to pay and see. I don't want to brag. <laughs> <laughs> He's amazing. All right. Uh, so now they start talking about Jackie. And of course, John has to talk about Jackie's health issues. Again, he cannot he stop himself from talking can't. about this. Cannot learn. Crow's just rolling Steve over in his grave. Steve tells me about it, but it's not only Steve. Jackie's documentary, Jackie, yeah. you know, the joke man, was shot by this guy, Ian Carr. Ian told me about Jackie having a seizure before <laughs> Grillo did. So if Jackie wanted to be mad at Grillo, be mad at Ian. But Jackie doesn't even hear my show, just hears from trolls, probably. Sutter and John and Grillo were goofing on you, you know, having a stroke or whatever. We weren't goofing on him. We care about the man. I'll always love Jackie. Yeah, I knew he had a seizure. I never said a word about it because I, I was really feeling bad about it. You just did. <laughs> you She's literally another one. Both of you. <laughs> Two fucking yentas over here I talking really, about everybody's health. I really need a crow's drop on secrets. my board. Of crow just going, just going, oh, Jesus. Like Every time he brings up Jackie's health problems, it's like, John. Yeah. That's the problem. How are you not figuring this out? But each time it's different because he finds another name to throw, to pull down under with. You know, Ian Caw, Jackie's good friend, he told me. And it's just like, oh, I bet Ian's sitting there going, thanks, pal. I really appreciate you getting this out on radio gunk where it needs to live and breathe. Well, no one's going to fucking see it, so. Of course not. (laughs) Kevin's doing them the biggest favor of their lives right now. All right, so we all know that John had a stand-up gig in Florida with a dozen people in the audience, and that's including Scott the Engineer, and I imagine Scott's girlfriend, too. So It was an intimate night with Stuttering <laughs> yeah, John. An intimate evening with Stuttering a, John. A lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of ladies, they really, you know, they, you know, they pay. You know, uh, the Metallica plays yeah. uh, the Apollo or something, it's like, oh, this is like a fun chance to be in a small group and witness this. Yeah. So, intimate. intimate. Doesn't come yeah. along. Entenmann's night at the yeah. Apollo with Stuttering John. So Tonight, tonight I'm not only going to tell the joke, I'm going to tell the story behind the joke. <laughs> it's fucking uh, Bruce uh, Shitstain. Yeah. So this- By the way, he would, sell, he would sell out that show. If he legit said, yeah. I'm doing a show yep. at, at X venue, and I'm, I'm going to be telling jokes and giving the background to each joke, Forget it. Would Julie, sell out. One better. The background's all the same. One better. <laughs> live beer on the balcony. I swear to God, oh. if he just decided, like, I'm going to do beer on the balcony in a theater, I'm front row, first of all. I'm buying listen, tickets for all of us. Listen, Kevin. And Carl's you, passed out in the first 10 minutes. <laughs> Kevin, you got to get, you got to, you got to take this up a notch and you got to, you got to make a plea to right now because you know he's going to watch this and you got to say to John, listen. Kevin does something you can't do, John. He makes money at this. So you want to start making some fucking money, hitch your fucking wagon to this horse right here that hosts this fucking show, all right? And make some goddamn money. Dude. And lean into your stupidity. Let me ask you this, Shirley. All right, so we do a double bill. Yeah. Does Beer on the Balcony open for WATP or is it the other way around? Oh no no no! You got to close. Beer on the balcony is the feature. Oh I... <laughs> no! You got to close with beer on the balcony. You close. I know it's, it's tough. Close. I was trying to you debate him. Follow you want right. to follow I'm beer follow. on the balcony? Yeah, because he can pull the clips live. <laughs> yeah, he'll just he'll be sitting in the front row with his little Patrick <laughs> Michael recorder. Oh, yeah. this is gold. He's <laughs> not going to pull any clips. It's like when I worked with Sour Shoes for the first time, and we did a live show together, and I, and I had all this 
uh, this produced show in my head. I'm going to do this bit with him. Then I'm going to go out into the crowd and I'm going to do this. And they're going to, he's going to sing songs for people. And you know what happened? I ended up standing next to this fucking guy while he stands in front of a keyboard with a guitar around his neck, a harmonica around his neck, a blonde wig and rollerblades on. And I watched him for 45 minutes, not contributing a fucking thing to this show. Cause I was in awe of this madness. And that, is what would happen with Carl. He would just stand there and watch John disintegrate in front of people, and he would love every second. You're of right. It. I got. I got to let him headline. That's a good yes. point. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get out of your way, John. Just, just let me yeah. do my show real quick, and then it's all you. All right. So Monique asked him about this audience that he had, and this is John's response. Uh, well, Shirley, you've been so good at this so far. What do you think John will say as far as this, this uh, turnout that he had? Oh, um, it was a bad night. There was a rainstorm or something. N- well, it's definitely it has nothing to do with him or the the numbers weren't accurate. Uh, nothing the, to do had, with him. Let's go right, with that. The venue didn't promote the it. Venue properly. didn't promote it. Let's, yeah. Let's go with nothing to do with John. Check this out. Yeah. Well, I mean, to do what you do and go around to all these fucking venues and everything, I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine doing that. Well, I would I'll be so concerned about like. How many people show up? Will I be funny? You know, if, especially if you're headlining, no, is it just going to be fucking, be. you know, me and 12 people or, or like three oh, people you. like that Julie show that I took pictures of? Yeah, well, you know, I, you what, know what? You know, if I could address the 12 people thing, you know, how many p- people Dice Clay, who was one of the best comics ever, drew yeah. in that in that venue that I got 12 people at? What? 30. <laughs> Jim Florentine, 10. <laughs> What a fucking asshole. He's supposed to be friends with Florentine and Dice. He talks about how he's Instagramming with Dice all the time. And that's his first response. It's like, oh, yeah, I only had 12, but 14 and 10. You think I suck? Yeah, right. Like, <laughs> that's, not, that's not a good answer to anything, first off. And why are you throwing those guys under the bus? What, what an dummy. asshole. What a dummy. What a shithead. Do, do we know the venue he's talking about? Uh, the Boca something. One oh, of, the one black the, box. Yeah, the black box. I forget which town it's in. There's two. Listen, of them. in in his defense, it's not it's not a huge selling fucking comedy club. It's a little small little mini theater that they. It's in a strip mall. I think yeah. there's a Planned Parenthood over there or some shit. And <laughs> and, and and you know, uh, I highly highly doubt Florentine did ten, and I guarantee you. Dice isn't coming out of the fucking car for 30 people. He's out of his fucking mind. And as far as three people at my show, yeah, I've done a show for three people. It was many, many years ago. I don't recall having a show with three people. I would pull the fucking... I'd walk out and I'd go, hey, guys, let's go to the green room and get high. What are we doing here? This is ridiculous. Yeah, and then you and would I say... Would, and then you would say, and who I would brought talk weed? about it, too. That's the other thing. <laughs> <laughs> I would say what? I'm sorry. Then, then you would say, who brought the weed? Because there's no way that you're yeah. busting out your stash. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm a Jew till the end. You're right, Kevin. But my point is... Sick that burn. <laughs> That here's the level of psychotic from this woman uh, that doesn't care. That she posted pictures, which means she came and hid at this show or so, or somebody sent her pictures. I guarantee you, 100. percent I didn't do a show for three people. I would tell it. I would share that story in a second. So right after this, it was six. <laughs> six, right this, six, I would do. Six, I've done. John, because he's mentioned that he's like friends with the owner of this club. Says that, oh yeah, Shuli was booked to this club one time, and he'll never be booked again. And he Thank didn't. God, he didn't elaborate gift. on that. And I'm like, well, is it because he didn't have a good turnout? Because are you going to get booked there again? Like, what, what? You don't really have a place to brag on this one. First of all, it's not a comedy club. It's not the. It's not the comedy store. It's not the comedy cellar. It's the Boca Black Box. Yeah. It's going to be gone in a year. Purple showed like, me a photo from this place, and you're right. It's set up like a theater. It's a comedy club, yeah. but it's not like tables and chairs. It's like set up like a, it's horrible. It's not a good venue. It's where shitty improv lives. Yes. That's, that's what the Boca Black Box does. All right, Shuli, get ready, because uh, they got some things about what an asshole you are. Oh, got to get your reaction to this. But I will tell you this. Shuli. Now... Here's, now, here's a real asshole, because Shuli tweeted out, John, Howard told you to abort your kid. Uh, you should have listened to him, and, and and you should have aborted all of them. I have the screenshot. I can send it to you. He took it down after, like, 10 hours because he realized he can get thrown off of Twitter. 
Shuli what account? Is, dude, what is he talk? Is there a fake Shuli account that tweeted this? <laughs> Did you didn't tweet that he should have aborted all of his children? You don't remember tweeting that? <laughs> no, no. And he said he he, he has, said he has a, a screenshot, screenshot of it. I yeah. would love to see that. Yeah, John, please was, produce this. We've got proof. Shuli got blackout drunk. Told me to board all my kids. And let me tell you, he, he much as admitted this. it. <laughs> let me ask you this. Uh, uh, maybe he's confusing me for the other Jew, uh, Howard. But he, <laughs> Howard was the one who told me to board his kid. But I don't know, let Shuli me ask you, or Howard or one of those guys. With as angry as he's been with me lately, with yeah. as much shit as he's talking while having me block like the pussy that he is, wouldn't he have posted that screenshot by now? Yeah, th that's what I was thinking, too. He posts all this shit. In fact, I made fun of him for that Shaquille O'Neal story, and he yeah. had to post the video up on his YouTube channel. He's like, oh, see, I did beat Shaq. Like, no, John, you didn't even listen to why I was goofing on you. I exactly. believed you that you made a uh, lucky shot. I'm just saying you can't actually beat Shaquille O'Neal at basketball. It's retarded to think that and to say that. That's what I was saying, you moron. Uh, yeah, I, I could totally beat him. You know, just give me a 98-point handicap. Yeah. He really John changed believes, the rules of basketball that said I beat Shaquille O'Neal basketball. John made a conscious decision to believe the edited version of the <laughs> of that day. Yes. Yeah, it's literally less than a minute long. And it just yeah. shows shows Shaq so put off by even being there. He's just so yeah. over it. And John's running around and grabs the ball and chucks it up. And he's like, oh, Shaq was so pissed. Was he? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> is, he, is he really upset that ruined his street yeah. cred? I, I doubt yeah, it. Yeah, you ruined his. How day. many rings does Shaq have? I, I think he right. was fine. I, I don't yeah. think he's like off the top 100 NBA players of all time because of that. No, he drove sure. his blowjob mobile back to his mansion. <laughs> <laughs> give a shit. Some fucking stuttering idiot from Canoga Park thinks of him. All right, so, Shuli, this is where they could talk about your Twitter followers, and I definitely want to talk to you about this, because yeah, well, this the, is the best the news that up, John's huh? ever heard. He's so excited about this. <laughs> I, I responded to him saying, oh, John, uh, you know, uh, he's such a coward, you know, like, he blocks you, or, or you know, like, meanwhile, I, I text him, Shuli, um, you mean the kind of coward that, like, I go what? up and interview you, and you scurry away from me and run away and get security? Oh, with his, cute little, with his cute little backpack on, like yeah. a 12-year-old? Yeah, like a Ninja Turtle. Oh, yeah. she's psychotic. That kind of coward, Shuli. Yes. And let's talk about the cowardness, Shuli. You bought 50% of your Twitter followers. Now, I, I, tell, I ask you, Monique, how pitiful is that? I talked to, I talked to Scott, the engineer, about that Yeah. just the other day. And I go, I go Scott, I go, you're not going to believe this. Shuli bought half of his followers. He goes, get out. So he says to Scott, I, go, yeah. I says. Because I know it as a fact, because these guys looked up. You want to hear something sad? We're talking to each other right now. Oh, and also, Shuli bought half his followers. Jesus I can't believe he, he goes, he goes, and I know that for a fact, because a guy looked it up for me. And so yeah, they, and, and, John just has decided, like, this has to be the gospel, obviously. You Let me tell you followers. how psychotic he is. He's taught. He's having a whole scenario in his mind where he texted me. He yes. never. He said I texted him, and I said, "Hey, Shuli." He's never <laughs> texted me ever. Also, Shuli, before you address the Twitter thing, I want to point yeah. out that on our bonus show, I played a clip of John playing the clip for his friend Tony of him interviewing you in LA when the Stern Show was in LA. And right. John even says, he goes, I was eight beers in. I was pretty drunk. And then he shows the video and John is mispronouncing words. He can't even talk as he's trying right. to interview. And I'm like, wait a second. Who's the hero in this? I'm, I'm confused. Like we're supposed to think that Shuli's the asshole. You People thought I was making a joke when I said, I thought a homeless person was attacked, was like coming at me. He must've uh, reeked it, of booze. And he, he comes stunk. at you just like, and his first question was not even a question. Oh, what do you think about the fact that Jump the Shark was a, a, the shark that jumped over the shark? I don't Carl, comments. It was, like, what? It was that question was a tweet he had put out for <laughs> yeah. three days in a row, <laughs> attacking the Stern show, yeah. trying to get them to read. It was so. Isn't pathetic. it funny that John Hine was on uh, jumping sharks? Hold on. Well, nope, that's not it. Let me pull my phone out. 
Like that's supposed to fuck me up. Like, oh, what, you don't you dare talk about my friend John Hine. How dare you? And, and just real quick, Centering John, in order to jump the shark, you have to be popular and good at some point. <laughs> the Centering John podcast has never jumped the shark. I can promise you that. I love it. So let's talk about the Twitter followers because uh, I think it was Tony Michaels who went to John and said, hey, just so you know, man, I looked this up, and half the followers are, are bots or bots. <laughs> Comment. Oh, for me, yeah. yeah. I, listen, I don't doubt it. Uh, I, I've never purchased them, but I know a lot of people, especially with verified accounts that have fake, you know, followers attached to it. I have no idea where I would go to buy followers. I don't know what that process is like. And my wife would rather I spend money on porn. Uh, every day for the rest of my life than to see a payment for bot followers on Twitter. She would fucking rip my spine out like Predator. All, all right. right. I'll so, comment on this real quick because, as you know, yeah. I'm a digital marketing professional. I know a little bit about how social media works and things like that. Huh? shuli has been Look on at Twitter. The big brain on Kevin. I know. Yeah. I know. Watch Shit. out. Kevin's got expertise in some things. Also, you should put former in there because you're you're just a professional podcast. Okay, now. good point. Good point. And, uh, how much did you make as a uh, professional? <laughs> what was it again? I dabbled I- in digital marketing. <laughs> so what what these assholes don't understand is that Shuli's been on Twitter since 2009. And what this thing measures is people who no longer are active on Twitter. So, yeah, there's going to be a percentage of people over the last 13 years who signed up for Twitter, followed somebody, and then abandoned their account and stopped using it. It happens <laughs> right. all the fucking time. In fact, anyone who has a large following like Shuli does, who's been on Twitter for a long time, is going to have a percentage of people who are now inactive on Twitter. It doesn't mean you bought your followers. I just, I'll just throw it out there. Well, thank thank God you're smart because I'm such an idiot. I don't even know how to defend this. I'm like, I maybe I did. I'm like, maybe I did buy all these people. I don't know. John's so yeah, proud I, of himself. Did I click I, on something without knowing? And you know, I don't know. I don't know Shuli that well, but uh, what I what I've gathered so far in our limited interactions is you kind of seem cheap as shit. So you know, <laughs> yeah. spending a bunch Call of me money. Call on- tab. Get it over with. <laughs> All right, uh, let's let's get into the more pressing issue, not about your Twitter followers, but what exactly did you do on the Howard Stern show? Because yeah. <laughs> as I pointed out on this bonus show we just did, it's on our Patreon.com slash Who Are These Podcasts, John goes, oh, Shuey did a very short stint on the Howard Stern show. He was on there longer than John was. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And got paid a lot more than he and got paid. Yes, I know. <laughs> you never did an unpaid internship. You were actually yeah. an employee there. The entire yeah, yeah. time. So, all right, let's find 401 out. 401K. And Monique, who is a Howard Stern super fan, who knows everything there is to know about Howard Stern, is asked the question, what did Shuli do on that show? And, and, and I just want to ask you this question. And, and, and because I really don't know what Shuli did on the Stern show, okay? I mean, I, for him, like, I want, you know, for him to say that, like, he's some kind of, part of history like he he thinks he's like like just like that guy said you can't even put me in the same sentence as Julie when well, it do comes you see to- what I have up there right now so John was the call screener and the <laughs> stunt boy on the Howard Stern show John you were the stunt boy on the Howard Stern show now don't get me wrong Howard Stern great show being the stunt right. boy on the Howard Stern show impressive for a stunt boy but to, for the call screener to be like, Shuli never did anything on the Stern show, and I made history, is ridiculous. And and also, you know, the, the classic bits that he's talking about were things that were written for him. Yes. It's not stuff that he did on the fly, uh, in the moment. Um, and, and so, and, you know, let's compare this. How many times did I come into the studio and be called a fucking idiot? And how many times were you called in the studio and be called a fucking idiot? Um, a lot of my material was on the spot. Uh, yeah. You know, so the, the- what she was trying to say is that he was making jokes and John was the joke. Yes, exactly. I agree. You were both exactly. part of the same show, but in very different roles. Uh, yeah, I, I would I would have a live real time conversation with Underdog or Bigfoot for twenty minutes, and then I would bring the best, you know, uh, eighty to one hundred and twenty seconds of these calls, and riff off of that with and make my boss laugh 
a lot more than John did. Uh, yeah, but, I, sure. I made Howard Stern laugh uh, several times. Yeah, well, you, don't yeah. you remember uh, that line yeah. I had with the thing and then the other thing? Remember when great. I said that Baba Booey has big teeth? Remember that? I was yeah, everyone that? was with laughing the, with the shrimp in the ocean. Remember Jesus that? Christ. <laughs> It's really incredible to me that that's where John is at now. He's talking about like, well, I was part of history with the Howard Stern show, and I won't just take that away from it. him. Just yeah, be, it's fine. Just be proud of it and move the fuck on. I wouldn't take well, that away from him. The, he left the Howard Stern show like 15, 20 years ago. Like, yeah. move the fuck on. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, I would say this is as embarrassing as talking about what you did in middle school, but he also does that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So true. Also, I just want to point out that – the Howard Stern show has gone through, uh, you know, obviously a lot of different eras. And when Shuley joined the show, it's when they went to satellite. And if you talk to big Howard Stern fans like myself, a lot of them would say probably the best era of Howard Stern were the first five years on satellite radio. It was the wild. It was the animal house yes. uh, version of the Stern. It's I mean, when they had the most comedians had- in there. You guys had all the roasts going on. Artie Leg was out of fucking control. It was amazing. We had, I saw somebody in chat p- talk about the craptacular where yeah. high pitch Eric shit for 24 hours. John, they left me with a live mic, okay, for 24 hours. That's how much trust and faith they had in me as a broadcaster. And that was like my third month there in New York. And since then, there were, I, I spent Thanksgiving on Richard Christie's parents' farm with his parents live broadcasting for. Ten hours, I believe, on Thanksgiving. No script, no questions. I text Richard every now and then for for a question for so. Like John, John, literally got lucky. He got lucky no, that he, he stuttered. He, he got, got hired because he's a stutterer. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry that's it. That's it. Welcome to Who Are These Podcasts? White Power. <laughs> Thank you. I rest my case. <laughs> Should we even contribute to Who Are These Podcasts? <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't know how you could call him out on that. All right, so let's talk about this whole idea that uh, we're just peddling in hate over here. That's all we do. <laughs> oh, coming from Didn't this fucking guy. Yeah. Really, Mike? You want to put all this shit that I did on the air for the Stern Show, and then do you think Shuli could fucking light a candle to me on that? You know, I don't even know that it's a competition, but I know it's that. It's not, but I'm just saying. They you peddle know. in hate, and it's, you know. Oh. I- <laughs> Monique from Radio Gunk is talking about peddling and hate. That's all she does is hate uh. on the Howard Stern Show. It's how they made their entire fucking website and podcast and everything. And, and somebody was- somebody sent me a DM about this interview. They didn't send me the clip, but they asked me a question regarding a staffer that John had accused yeah. of their wife of being unfaithful oh, during yeah. their marriage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like... And and I'm reading this and I'm going, I can't believe what a piece of shit this guy is to, I don't know if any of this is true. And I got news for you. He probably doesn't either. No. So, but we're going to get into it, but she asked if Fred Norris's wife cheated on him. Right. Because he got her a job at that dinner theater thing he did. That's also yeah. embarrassing. Yeah. Where and, they go, oh, walk around and be Italian in front of people. Yeah, and and his answer is pretty much like, that's what everyone's saying. Everyone's saying that she banged everybody on that thing. And it's like, okay. It's, it's, anyway, we'll and, get into that. I'm, yeah, well, but I'm just it? like, this is, this is why you have no one in your life. This is why <laughs> no everybody shit. hates you. No shit. Be- because... You, it, whether it's whether it's true or not, it's not your fucking place to talk about, dude. Just keep yeah. it to yourself. What right. don't you get about that? Let's, let's and once them. again, John, it's hold a candle, not light a candle. Yeah. <laughs> light a candle and pray for someone. I didn't someone. want to interject again with that. Did you can't <laughs> light a candle to me. He can't even light a menorah. <laughs> Because he's Jewish, get it? The few times that he goes on other people's shows and spews hate about you, they get their best ratings. And that's just the of way course. it works. So yeah. to peddle in hate, I guess, all, works. All of them do. I just and find so. it amazing that, that all people get so many. I mean, that uh, that guy Kevin on fucking, you know, uh, Why Do I Podcast? <laughs> that guy gets $10,000 a month, money. Why do I podcast? <laughs> Fuck you, Kevin. You know, for peddling hate. Fuck that guy. On me. 
<laughs> he's making more money from his podcast than I am. It's who are yeah. these yeah. podcasters, not why do I podcast? Whatever. So when you threaten to break someone's legs, that's not hate, right? No, I'm the one who's kind of like hate. By the way, I think they're on. I think they're on volume two or three of why we hate Shuli uh, yeah. shows on yeah. Radio Gunk. The, yeah. Literally, Ours. I think. I think the word hate is the title in every show. So and I, I don't and know I've what. Literally said, Shuli, and you've heard me on here say that I love Stuttering John. I love Patrick Michael. Yes. Oh yes. yeah. But I love these guys because they're so funny and we yeah. can get so much content out of them and it's and it's great. But my favorite part about that clip that we just played is John just admitted that I make more money off of John than he makes off of himself. <laughs> <laughs> Victory lap, victory lap. Carl's taking a victory lap. Listen to all the shows, then he'll tell you why it goes. Sit back, he's taking a victory lap. Speaking of Jen from the Jingles Department, who sang that magnificent song. So I mentioned that they talk about Fred's wife cheating. And then Jen, I don't know where he pulled this out of, but he says this. Some oh, and questions. by the way, what the what is I podcast guy? Yeah. Oh, oh, I, oh, I got some great intel on him too. I'm and, not sure I want to know it. Well, all I'm gonna say is, uh, what were we saying about Fred before? Okay. Anyway, go ahead. So John's <gasps> implying that my wife is cheating on me, and that he has the inside scoop on this. Again, again, <laughs> you you've pissed him off so much. You're yeah. making more money on his show than you are. Why not just say it? Who are you threatening? What is <laughs> what is supposed to happen by you say? Is Kevin supposed to run and call you now and be like, John, I'll suck your dick if you don't say anything? <laughs> what what's supposed to happen? Surely he doesn't know anything about anything, even stuff that's on the internet that he could watch and learn about. He doesn't know. He he literally posted the video of Shaq because he thought that I didn't think he made a lucky shot against Shaq. Like, that's not what I said at all. And yet he thinks he has inside information about my relationship with my wife. Like this is and this is retarded. what he did. This is what he did when I was working for the show. Is he yeah. would he would he would accuse me of being a a source for him or a mole. Uh, that's giving him information, and and I'm like, dude, I got a family. I got kids. these people are looking for people to fire. Like, what are you doing? Like, what? Why would you fucking say that when you know it's not true? And I don't want to point out the hypocrisy of this. It's not my job to do that. But doesn't John talk about all the lies that people spread about him all the time? Oh, these people are all just lying about me. Like that's literally what he's doing. I don't lie. I don't, <laughs> I don't like, like to lie. To lie. Yeah, I only on. like to lie twice a month. <laughs> I think I have well, that drop on no, my board. I don't, I don't think he thinks this is a lie. He's this is like everything with the people that say, "Oh, you know, Opie was trashing you on his, on his show," yeah, and then he does nothing to verify it. Some some jackass said, "I bet Kevin's wife is cheating on him," and he was like, "Oh, you know, that's just some juicy gossip." I don't <laughs> lie in my. I don't like to lie. For another day. He's, he's such a fucking asshole. He really is. And uh, he's not done threatening me yet. So let's <laughs> check out some more threats. But yeah, I'm gonna go see Paul McCartney, and then tomorrow I do the MSCS show. And what that is guy, MSCS? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This Tommy show, and uh, and he is not very happy with uh, you know with Kevin from you know a Why Do I podcast. <laughs> I don't think this Kevin guy knows who he fucks with sometimes. Like you know, like I, like he fucks with people, but I don't know. I, I got people in New York who who are not very happy with uh, you know uh, with Kevin. I'm just saying, like. <laughs> At some point, it's going to turn around on him, I think. At some point, <laughs> I know the original intent, intent of who are these podcasters. I mean, they rip me a new asshole several times. I know somebody's asking in the in the chat, you know, what makes, you know, you ripping an asshole into Howard any different than who are these podcasters you rip into, like, all podcasts. Yeah, that's a pretty good question there, Monique. So, John, yeah, Did she answer it? Yeah, I have, I have that clip in a second. So, John, um, that was a veiled threat, right? He knows people in New York. You have a problem with me well not only that but he's kind of he's kind of putting the threat on tommy a yeah. little oh, bit, yeah. right like like he's like uh yeah i'm seeing him and you know he's not too thrilled and uh you gotta i don't know if he knows who he's talking to or like what are you implying tommy's involved in also monique i gave her credit for this interview earlier but at this point monique should have stopped her tracks and said joe what do you mean by that what did you just mm -hmm. say you just said you know people in new york have a problem with carl what do you what are you implying what do, what do you this, mean does this angle look like this guy knows anyone anywhere? 
<laughs> yeah, he doesn't know anybody anywhere because everybody that he does know finds him so off-putting that they would never do anything on his behalf. Yeah. Also, well, not for nothing, guys. I always say this all the time. If you're going to sue someone, just sue them. Don't threaten it. If you're going to break someone's <laughs> legs, just have their legs broken. Sure. <laughs> when you go right. on a show and you go, I know guys who got a problem with this guy. If I get beat up by strangers, I'm going to guess that John's behind it and I'll have right. some evidence for it. Who do you work for? <laughs> right. You're saying this is John's cry for help. He's he, 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 And otherwise, he would have just slit his wrists already. Well, yeah. This the is guy does have his help. phone propped up on the bottom bunk of the bunk bed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he probably did send some people to break your legs and they got a good look at you and they're like, yeah, I don't think we can do any more damage to this guy's legs. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> they called him up. It's going to cost me as much as you make Someone in Someone got month. to us first. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, did, did you get the job done? Yeah, just look at his legs. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, here's a fiver. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, that's that's just insane. The fact that he just threatens me on the internet like that. Uh, a, a hate peddler like wanna, you. I don't want to <laughs> yeah. say. I don't want to <laughs> say how much this is going to set me back, but let's just say it's what Kevin makes in a in a month. All right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so let's talk about why John is threatening me and why he's so upset. But you know, just don't use my content. I don't ca- goof my audio book. Put it behind your paywall. Charge people five dollars a month, and you're taking money out of my hands, and it's no. my copyright. <laughs> That's where. I don't, you know, and play my beer on the balcony, but that are behind my paywall. That's then, then you've crossed the line to me. I'm taking money out of his hands. Uh, so people who want to watch John's contest, like, well, I can just get it from Carl, so I'll just do that instead. <laughs> right. In his fucking mind, I was gonna pay you, but uh, <laughs> he's such a fucking asshole. Literally, he gets people giving him super chats. Every single episode, who are only there because who are these podcasts set up there? And they just want him to read something ridiculous. I am making this guy money. And the fact that he's saying that I'm taking money out of his hands, and that's why he can threaten me with violence? (laughs) I don't think that's true. All you're doing is editing a community college film somebody (laughs) made. That's all you're doing. It's it's total shit, but somehow you find a way to find the gold in it. All right. Yeah, so that's Julie, the difference. You, you talked about how he was having uh, Tommy threaten me. This goes above and beyond here. Uh-oh. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Details. And like an idiot, Kevin contacts Tommy from MSCS. Uh-oh. So Tommy has his whole, you know, his email, all this shit. And oh my god. Kevin doesn't understand. Tommy's my friend. So well, first well, off, apparently he's Kevin's friend too. They exchange information. Yeah. So first <laughs> off, I, I emailed him from WATP show at gmail.com. It's on our website. <laughs> <laughs> and then I can when, just see him ripping up paper at home right now. Going, <laughs> and then when Tommy sent me his phone number, I texted him from our Google voice number. That's on our website. Oh, he's got oh, all my man. information. Oh no. Tommy's going to come after me now. I'm so stupid. I'm, and, f- I'm foiled again. And Tommy was very cordial to me. We talked about him coming on my show, which I need to follow up with him now, obviously. And Go get him on the show. Stuff in the, in the back computer and track you down. <laughs> <laughs> Enhance. Enhance. <laughs> so, I mean, John, I, this is the most interesting part of the show because it's about me. But seriously, like Monique like gave up on interviewing him at this point. Like, this is the shit you want to get into. Like, what do you mean? What's Tommy going to do to him? What, what are you talking about? Why would you follow up, have some follow-up questions on this? He's being insane. Yeah, why are you a grown man close to his 60s threatening people? <laughs> what, what is wrong with you? All right, so he never grew up. He has like he's a stunted brain. He has like a stunted fourteen year old's brain. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the only thing I can think of is like his brain rests in a pool of Coors Light. That's what's going on. No, that uh, that's definitely contributing to it. But he has been like this his entire life. Like with all the all the content from him that I've seen, he has always just been this petulant child who it fights against the things that he thinks are more powerful than he is. It was Howard. It was, it was the other writers on the Jay Leno show. It was the people that wrote on whatever that Stephanie Miller show was. And now it's Carl and he'll never take any responsibility for himself because he's a 14 year old boy stuck in a 60 year old man's body substitute teaching in English class while people make fun of him on the fucking internet. And that's hard to do as a 14 year old boy. (laughs) You have a drinking problem. (laughs) Think about when you were 14, like how sensitive you were and like how much you tried to craft your image to look cool. The other kids that is him him right that's actually a really good observation and i will say that when i was 14 
I didn't know how alcohol worked either. <laughs> <laughs> you mean if I drink it out of a spoon, I'll get drunk, more drunk? Yeah. You know, weird right. shit like that. So I will give Monique credit for this clip. We're almost through this, guys. I know it's been a long segment, but it's too good. Like he, and let me ask a question. Now, again, this is a small... How many people w- would be able to pick Kevin from why are these... You know, from a lot of white podcasts out of a lineup. No way. Oh, I don't he's know. a nobody. So he's got to he's got to attack somebody who's had way more success than he ever will. Um. Yeah, but you know what? If if you're telling me he's making eight to ten thousand dollars a month, yeah, uh, I really? guess he wins. I mean, you know, so he can well, be whatever know. the fuck I, he I wants to be. I mean, I don't know. About, I don't know about <laughs> he wins. <laughs> I, like uh, he, I guess he wins. He's making more than you off of your content. Yeah. I guess he I wins. Wow. I'm I don't famous. Know. The uh, lineup... He doesn't win. He just doesn't lose. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the lineup has to be Carl, Carl's brother, uh, and Doug from Good Times, Great Movies. Yeah, all all lined up there, and then also Punxsutawney Phil is there, and you got to look at that lineup and go, which one's Kevin from Why Are These Podcasts? <laughs> I, oh, I love this man. idea. Like John has really latched onto this idea that the reason why we goof on him is not because it makes for amazing content that's been growing our audience steadily for years, but because I'm so jealous of his fame and success. <laughs> Is that what really kind of what you fame? think, John? Is what, that possibly true? How many times do you think he gets stopped a day on the street and says, oh. and somebody goes, are you stuttering John? He says Zero. that it happens five to six times a day. By the way, he doesn't look anything like stuttering John anymore. He doesn't stutter. No. He's trans- Over the last three years, we've documented this. He's yeah. transformed into a fish. This maybe, guy is not a toad. toad. <laughs> More of a toad, but all right. Maybe the five or, or six times his face locks up during a stutter. Somebody goes, hey, are you that guy? Yeah. He probably no, he, walks well, around yelling, what did you do with the money? And they're like, oh, it's stuttering John. Oh, hey. <laughs> he's mistaking all the times that he's leaving the supermarket. And someone says, excuse me, sir, are you going to pay for that? As he's trying to wheel out I'll, a cart. I'll, just si- yeah, full I'll, of I'll sign this receipt. Does Harvey Weinstein win because he's a millionaire? Um. Well, his wife does because she divorced him and got all his fucking money. So I go with that. I don't really give a shit about how much money you make. It's about it. It's about who you are as a person. So he just compared me to Harvey Weinstein, a serial rapist. Wow. John, I, I laugh at jerks on the internet. I'm not a serial rapist. <laughs> not yet. I knew it. I mean, I had a feeling. Sorry, I didn't mean I knew it. I meant I had a feeling. <laughs> what, a, what a fucking asshole! <laughs> I don't. I don't care what. I don't care about how much money people make. But he makes more money than I do on Patreon every month. I can't he rapes believe more it. Than He's I do. my content. Uh, uh. I told you all the information about Kevin. Now close your eyes and picture Hitler. Thank you. <laughs> I rest my case. I rest my case. All right, this is the this is the last clip I have. And feel free to call me a dabbler if you want. If it if it rocks your boat, you're a dabbler. All right, dabbler. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do. Dabbler. Dabba dabba do. <laughs> Who's my dabbler? <laughs> Who are these podcasts? W A.